Austria. I believe our special guest is already here. Jane, are you there? I'm here. Hi, everybody. Hi. Thank you for coming again. Uh, just so everyone knows, this is Jane's fourth and final time with us uh, this year, and um, it's just been such a pleasure having you. I'm just going to go through quickly uh, what the plan is for today, and then I'll start with uh, some questions for you. Sounds great. And, and it's been my pleasure participating in the class. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. It's been, it's been lots of fun. So we're obviously starting off with a few questions, and then Jane will do a reading of another story that she wrote, and then we'll talk about um, we'll talk a little bit about characters and and a writer's purpose for writing in relation to the story that she will uh, do a reading of, and then we'll we'll do uh, we'll talk about another example for assignment twenty three, your short story summary, and obviously we'll use the the story that Jane is reading to us to to give that example. And then we'll talk about how when you when you read any story, you might interpret it differently than somebody else. So we'll talk about different ways of interpreting Jane's story. And then we'll have another a little bit of a discussion talking about writing and, and just setting goals. Then I'll remind you what to work on when we're all done. All right, so um, I just want to remind students that um, that Jane, you had you had encouraged everyone to write in 2017, and that you'd be happy to read their stories. Yes, that's right, Andrea. I would be more than happy to read any stories that um, if you want to pass them along to me, and um, you know, no judgment. It'd be just great to see what people are writing, whether they're blogs or short stories or. Um, Whatever, that'd be great. Oh, that's that's awesome. And and as you'll learn, as as Jane tells us about herself, uh, she has a great deal of experience in, in writing and in a lot of things. Uh, so um, so it's a, it's a really great opportunity to have her look at your work if if that's something that interests you. So Jane, my first question for you is, where are you from originally, and where do you currently live and work? Um, so, Andrea, I am originally from Thunder Bay, um, from the Port Arthur side of Thunder Bay, for people that might uh, remember that term from 1970, uh, before Port Arthur and Fort William merged to become Thunder Bay. Other people call it Thunder Bay North, um, and that's where I grew up and went to Hammershold High School and um, enjoyed working um, in Thunder Bay as a student. Um, my parents had a printing business downtown on Cumberland Street and um, I worked there and then I also uh, went off to university to uh, Carleton University in Ottawa um, where I studied journalism and um, had an interesting career in journalism in television and radio working um, in various parts of Canada for different networks and uh, ended up in London, Ontario, which is where I'm actually calling you from my house tonight. I'm just at, I'm just at home here. Um, I work now at a uh, small university called King's University College, and it is about uh, 3,500 students, uh, and it is part of a large, large university in London, Western University, uh, but ours is a smaller sort of satellite campus. Okay, well, thank you for telling us about all of that. I think you actually answered a, a few questions that I have. Um, you obviously told us a little bit how you how you got to the work that you do now, what you, what you did in the past. Is there anything you'd, you'd like to add to that at all? Well, I would like to add that when I was in high school, I did um, start writing a fair amount, um, even just for the high school uh, publications, you know, the yearbook or newsletters, that kind of thing. Um, we had a small sort of in-house, we called it a radio program over the public announcement system throughout the high school. So I always enjoyed communications and um, did some radio work at a young age. And actually, I think how you and I met, Andrea, was through a, a small journal, um, Sasquatch Journal. Yes, uh, the, the Squatchberry Journal. Squatchberry Journal. Sorry. No worries. I, I had sort of come across it uh, from a historical writer in Thunder Bay, shared it with me, and the journal actually is all about uh, Geraldton, Ontario, and, and I, I found uh, one of your stories, well, I found both of them that are in the journal, uh, but one in particular I thought, oh, that would be wonderful for the textbook, 
and I looked you up online. <laughs> I Googled <laughs> you and uh, we found each other, which was pretty incredible because um, uh, let, let people know how long ago it was that you wrote these stories. Yeah, so I wrote those stories when I was uh, a very young person. Uh, do you have the year in front of you by any chance, Andrea? Oh, it was the 70s? Yeah. so I L- Late been, 70s. Yeah, I would have been a, a, a young teenager back then and um, was just trying to dabble in a little bit of uh, creative writing. I actually started doing some short story writing, I can recall, in grade 7, of, uh, way back when. And um, I always really enjoyed writing those, those stories. And uh, I think that's stuck with me. Even now, I still do write for a small magazine uh, called Eat Drink Magazine. It's online, eatdrink.ca. And, uh, but mostly now, I, um, I work in professional communications for the university. Okay, well, thank you for that. Yes, um, if you'd like, I, I'd be happy to share some of your, your current work with the students uh, on my website. Is there yeah, a particular great. article that you have in mind at all, or just pick one? No, um, really anything is fine. Um, okay. We have done some travel stories for people that like to read about traveling. Okay. Um, and that's always been fun to write about traveling from a food perspective. So okay. um, going to places because they have interesting food um, has been a lot of fun. We did one in, the, in Nova Scotia where um, we got to try lobster. Mm. I think it was five different ways to have lobster. <laughs> that's, a, that's wonderful. It was wonderful. So um, food, food travel writing has been a passion. And um, so th- that, that's just sort of something that keeps me in the writing game. Oh, very neat. So I was looking, as you were answering my question before, I was looking at the date of the story you're sharing with us today. It was, um, it was from 1979. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, so I would have been, uh, let's see, 17 years old, 16 or 17 years old. Just yeah. incredible. <laughs> just incredible that we would have connected after all that time. Yeah, after all that time. I'm a few years older now. But still young at heart, right? There you go. <laughs> So um, can you tell us a little bit more about what you do in your current job? So in my current job at King's University College, um, I help tell the story of King's uh, to people that might be interested in studying at King's or working at King's or being in a partnership uh, with the university with some special projects. So um, we do that by writing content for our website or for our Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube channels, a, a lot of different social media communications. And uh, any of the students are welcome to follow along on any of those channels. Um, it's always at Kings at Western. Okay. And, um, and then we also uh, work with the media because I had worked in the media for a lot of years, so I'm able to help the media if they're looking for professors to interview or stories on certain topics, topics to write. Um, all on the whole way, we're really trying to create publications and um, written word and videos and um, just to explain what King's University College is all about and why people may want to consider studying there. Okay. Very neat. Just so that everybody knows, I have a, a special guest section on my website, and I, I'm going to update it with a new uh, Eat Drink magazine. Eat, sorry, Eat Drink magazine article by Jane, and um, and you can still see there's there's links um, to do with King's University College on there already. So so check that out for more information for sure. All right. So before you read your story, and actually I think you 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 pretty much answered this already. You talked about how you wrote it when you were a teenager, 17, you were saying. Um, anything else that you, you'd like to say about what made you to just decide to, what made you decide to write when you were that age and what inspires you to do what you do today? Um, I, I think um, at that time, I found it a very creative outlet. I was challenged at a young age, as I said, by teachers to write in the short story format. Um, which I, I enjoyed. I remember writing one short story about throwing a curling rock, and it was just mm-hmm. about sitting in the hack and looking at the shot and then releasing the curling stone, and that was the entire story. And I, I found that quite um, challenging and probably um, is why I like journalism as well because it's um, a lot of television journalism and radio journalism that I did was very rapid-fire 
um, you know, short bursts of writing. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I I enjoy that in social media today as well. Um, You know, concise and punchy, interesting um, written word is is something that I'm always drawn to. I think most people are, you know, a compelling compelling, uh, writing. I mean, not to say that the long form I, I admire greatly long form writing mm-hmm. and um, that, that that actually is uh, takes a lot of hard work for sure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I um I, I've, I've been enjoying learning more about about different things that you could write about um, just throughout my, my few years here at WASA. And there's just so many things that you can write. And and it's just it's really exciting to have you here talking about the sorts of things that you've done. Um, it, it's a it's a rare opportunity for sure. All Thank right. you, Andrea. Oh, you're welcome. So I thought now is a good time, I guess, um, for you to do the reading of your story. Okay, so just take it away. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so yeah, I see here now, this is from 1979, uh, Scotchberry Journal, The Choice. The hall clock bonged as Jessica Curlick took a breath in her packing. Wow, three o'clock already. Good thing I'm almost finished. As she plopped herself down in her canopy bed, she glanced up at the photo on her chest of drawers. Seems just like yesterday. Jessica's mind drifted back three years when the family photo was taken. Mark with his boyish grin, Greg looking like someone was holding a gun to his head, and Oliver suntanned and freckled, Dad looking proud, Jessica not really caring about tomorrow but living for the moment, and Mum. Oh, Mum, if you could only be here right now, if you could tell me what to do. I was so dependent on you, and I guess I still am. Jessica's eyes moved away from the photo and over to her closet, which seems so empty now. Well, at least it's finally clean. Her eyes continued around the room to her drawing easel, which was there now, with all her pens and paints neatly stacked. Above her easel was the window looking out onto the path that led to the dock. Part of the bay was visible, and Jessica remembered the long hours she had spent at her easel trying to capture this beautiful window scene during the different seasons of the year and times of the day. Beside her easel was her favorite creation. She had worked so hard at that sculpture, and Mum had been so proud, and now it was just collecting dust. Jessica looked at her guitar case leaning against her record player in the corner. Guess Greg will inherit that when I leave. Above her desk was a painting that she had gotten for her 16th birthday. Dad could never understand why she wanted it, but he had got it anyway. Jessica remembered how she used to spend long hours lying on her bed, listening to music, and trying to memorize every stroke of that painting. Her eyes continued to the door, which led into the hall. Jessica's eyes suddenly moved back to the family photo and to her mother. She thought of how she'd been at school that day, and she'd been called out of class and told to go home immediately. Dad's eyes had just seemed so sad, as if his whole soul had left him. Mrs. Curlock had been accidentally shot by a hunter. She was a part-time journalist in the midst of a story about her life in the bush when her life was suddenly ended. Jessica remembered her reaction when he asked her if she could finish her mother's story. She had confidently assured him that she could. This had all happened two years ago, and now Jessica was going off to study journalism at Carleton University. I can't say no now. Jessica rose from her bed and reached for her sculpture. She fondled with the familiar outline thoughtfully. But the memory of what she promised her father came to her, and she knew that the choice must be made. I guess I really have no choice. She gently placed the statue down and glanced at her open trunk. A better guide to understanding literature book was on top. Jessica reached over and picked up the heavy text that that had been her mother's. She sat down on the edge of her bed with the heavy text in her hands. She started to cry. Her long, dark hair fell over her face and onto the book. Well, why can't I do both, she asked herself out loud. Jessica knew that she could better portray her view of the area she had lived in and felt a part of in pictures rather than in words. Suddenly, she felt a strong arm being placed around her shoulders. As she looked up and saw her father sitting beside her, 
The comforting weight of his arm soothed her, and she gradually began to feel better. I guess we'd better get a hold of that university and tell them that there's been a change of plans, don't you think? Mr. Curluck said. He pushed Jessica's hair out of her eyes and took the book from her. As he got up and started to leave the room with the book, he looked back at the sculpture, and then his eyes suddenly caught the photo on Jessica's chest of drawers. He looked at the photo, his family and his wife, and then he told Jessica, you better finish packing now, Jess, and don't forget your paints. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity to share it. Yeah, it's. Um, I think it's. I think it's a story that uh, that a lot of people could relate to. It. I, I know, even though it's it's a story about someone going away to school, and and I'm and I'm a teacher. I can relate to a lot of things, in 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 that story. You know, a lot of the feelings and, and stuff like that. I thought a good question was for you to tell us a little bit more about how you got the idea uh, for for where your characters came from. Yeah, you know, I guess it's sort of hard to really um, remember that clearly, but mm -hmm. obviously there's, um, you know, some references to myself in that story, which um, anyone who's a writer would say, write what you know about. And, um, you know, clearly this is about a young woman who was heading off to university and in particular to a journalism school, which clearly was what I was uh, going to be doing. And um, so, I mean, I think there was a bit of that. I, I, you know, this really was a fictitious story. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly was never a artist or a sculptor or a painter or anything like that. But I did, I did um, love the outdoors very much, and I still do. And um, so, trying to to use an art form to express a love for the outdoors w would have been something very true to myself, and mm -hmm. I think still is today. Um, the characters, you know, she talks about a family, and I, um, you know, was fortunate to, to grow up in a family with uh, siblings and, and parents, and um, but they certainly weren't represented in that story. Th those things did not happen to me, mm -hmm. um, and I think I was probably writing more about from the teen perspective of uh, transition, right? Transition from mm -hmm. uh, a young a young teen into young adulthood. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, it's really interesting to hear where, where it comes from. And I thought that what I'd do now is just share one way of summarizing the story, because remember, we're, we're kind of trying to relate this back to Assignment 23. And I'll just go through this, uh, Jane, and then, um, and then we'll, we'll continue talking, because this is just one example of a summary. Um, as we'll talk about, there's, there's more than one possibility. So the first step is to come up with a topic sentence. So this is uh, the topic sentence. You can think of it as one sentence that explains the whole story, it, just in general. So this is what I wrote for my topic sentence. In the choice, Jessica Curluck has to decide how she should honor her mother and share her view of life in the bush. The next step, if you're just making an outline, is to figure out the important points. And one really easy strategy is to think about what happened at the beginning, what happened in the middle, and what happened at the end. So here at the beginning, I just talk about Jessica's love of art and her paintings. In the middle, I, I'm planning to mention uh, Jessica's mother and the fact that she passed away and then how, what the story that she was working on. And then at the end of the story, what happened was when her father comforted her and how she changed her plans to study art instead of journalism. I think if I may too, Andrew, what's sure. interesting about that is um, I always say to um, my stu staff and students that work with me is to open strong, middle strong, and end strong mm -hmm. in a story. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you've really summarized that that concept really well. And also, you. if you think about it, like what what was the the anchor that that tied together those three parts of the story? And and in my mind, it was the painting, right? Mm -hmm. Or the, the family photo, right? So mm -hmm. she she opens with that. She's drawn to that in the middle, and then she ends with that. And I. And, you know, that uh, people think that, oh, you just write a story as it comes out of your head, but there has to be some purposeful thinking and planning around it. Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just writing this down um, because um, because if anyone's thinking about writing a story, this is really useful information. Right. I mean, what 
what are how are you going to keep people interested in in what you're saying right and having and having an anchor like you're saying that sort of keeps people following along and and i love what you say about you know starting strong and and ending strong and um and and that's that and that's a big part you know the the structure of your story was a big part of what attracted me to it uh, obviously the the love of of the bush that was expressed throughout uh, was a big part of it too but really it was it was a well written story thank you i think that um like i said it's and keeping a tight focus right I mean, i'm sure you've talked about that in other lessons but um, you know, she had, it was sort of a singular focus. She was trying to make this choice and her mind was going mm -hmm. off in a few different directions, mm -hmm. but in the end, um, the tightness of the story has to be there to stay on that one, that one topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've definitely talked about this, especially, you know, I've talked a lot in the course about paragraph writing and, and, and just talking about sticking to your main idea, sticking to the point and not going off topic. And so you can even see that in, in a story that you might read. Um, you know, think about why do you enjoy this story so much? Well, it could be because it has such a strong focus. Um, you know, we definitely are, are sort of left wondering, well, what is she going to choose? I mean, that's what I was wondering the whole time as you were yeah. reading the story. So, so it really, it really held my attention really well. Yeah. And I think too, is, um, you know, when you're writing, I, I say to the students, like, don't, don't make someone's brain hurt. <laughs> you know, uh, there, if, if there's just too much going on and the reader feels overwhelmed by all this stuff coming at them, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, a lot of writers will say keep it simple, but um, obviously you want to have some depth there too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, your your story, uh, both your stories, even the one in the textbook are just so nice, nice to follow. And, you know, there's a lot of depth to them, a lot of depth and feeling and, and, and character development. But but at the same time, y you know where the start, middle and end is. <laughs> yeah. and, and that helps a lot if you're right. if you're trying to explain a story. So this is what I have as a concluding sentence. And, and the thing about this, when you're, when you're writing a summary, is that you want your topic sentence and your concluding sentence to be similar, but not exactly the same. And the biggest difference here that, that anyone who can see the screen will know is that I have put the title of the story in the topic sentence, but I have not put the title of the story in my concluding sentence. So the reason why you would put the title of the story in your topic sentence is because the, the person reading your summary needs to know the name of the story. So uh, if you're looking at this, you can see that I have in the choice and I've put, and that's the title of the story. So I've put quotation marks around that. So I'll just read my topic sentence again, and then I'll read my concluding sentence again, so you can see how they're similar. So topic sentence, in the choice, Jessica Kerlick has to decide how she should honor her mother and share her view of life in the bush. Then as my concluding sentence, I say, so this story explains how Jessica decided to study art in order to share her view of life in the bush and honor her mother. So similar, but not exactly the same. And with a with a summary, you really you're, you're just trying to explain the story in your own words. So this is this is what uh, the the final my final example would look like, right? If you if you wrote it all out as one paragraph, in the choice, Jessica Kerlick has to decide how she should honor her mother and share her view of life in the bush. At the beginning, we read about how much Jessica loves art. In her room, there are several of her paintings that she is proud of. In the middle, we learn that Jessica's mother, a part-time journalist, died before she could finish a story about life in the bush. Jessica wants the story to be told, but she isn't sure if she wants to be a journalist like her mother. At the end, Jessica's father comes into her room to comfort her. He tells her that she can change her plans and study art instead. So this story explains how Jessica decided to study art in order to share her view of life in the bush and honor her mother. And you can see how I've used some transitions here, right? I, I have, you know, at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, right? To, to make my um, summary easier to follow. So that's another thing that you need to do when you write uh, any paragraph is, is Use, use at least a few transitions. There's another one here, so I don't know if I caught them all, but I think you get the idea. All right, so that's my one example. And now I wanted to get into a little bit more about how everyone will interpret a story 
a little bit differently. Uh, so, so Jane, if someone were to read the choice, how else could they have interpreted it? Um, I suppose they might have interpreted it as somebody dealing with grief. Okay. That, that could have been an option, right, or guilt. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's possible for sure. So that's that's one of the ways that, that I have here. I sort of pre-prepared, obviously Jane and I have talked a few times. Um, so so here I have a couple of other perspectives and one of them is the idea of, of grief, or feeling guilty or or even a sense of obligation. So um, so maybe maybe with this, uh, you read the story and you, you, you read the story and you felt like Jessica had a hard time dealing with her mother's death. So as soon as you change your perspective, you need to come up with a, with a different topic sentence and a different concluding sentence. So your summary will change a little bit, but I mean, the story is still the same, right? The, the, same, um, the same things happened in the story. It's just that the way that you're explaining it has changed slightly. So if, so if we're talking about the story being about grief, then a, then a topic sentence could be something like this. In the choice, Jessica feels guilty upon her mother's death and struggles to choose the path that is meant for her. As a concluding sentence, in conclusion, Jessica allows herself to let go of her guilt and embrace the life that she was meant to lead. And I think, Jane, this relates to this, this, uh, this whole, what the whole story was about, what, what people kept coming back to is, you know, what was Jessica going to choose? Yeah, exactly. And, um, and that she herself needed to sort of go through the process to figure that out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, another, another option uh, um, would be that maybe you read the story and you felt like it was about how Jessica was not being who she should be, which is kind of similar to what I said here with, with the grief example, right? Um, you know, the difference, though, is, you know, letting go of guilt versus... Um, embracing who she is. So if we if we talk about um, Jessica being who she should be and, and figuring out who that is, then our topic and concluding sentence could be something like this. So topic sentence. In the choice, Jessica Kerluck has been told to communicate in one way, but she wasn't being true to herself. And as a concluding sentence, so when she chose to study art instead of journalism, Jessica found her true calling. So there's a whole bunch of ways that you could explain the story, which is which is kind of neat, uh, but it also makes summary writing challenging too. Yeah, and I think absolutely freedom was a definite theme of mine, mm -hmm. and um, freedom to choose. And um, you know, she was struggling. She did have freedom to choose, but she was possibly putting pressures on herself. But um, and she was given the opportunity to relieve herself of those pressures and to actually embrace her own freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really good to know. Um, and, and I think, you know, people that are listening might also be interested to know that any one story could have more than one theme, right? In it, you could have more yeah, than one absolutely. theme. Absolutely. The and depending on what mood you're in when you read it, uh, mm. what your setting is when you read it, mm. uh, what's going on in your own personal life and your own personal experiences would Obviously, I belong to a book club. Um, mm -hmm. We've been together for more than 20 years, and we each month we all read one book, the same book, and we get together and talk about it, and different people have different takeaways at the end of the book. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, another theme, if, if we're sort of listing themes, and we talk about, about, about um, you know, this idea of, of guilt, you know, you know, you could say acceptance as, as a theme, right? Acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, and and themes are just um, you know obviously freedom to choose is a couple of words, but it just sort of explains overall um, kind of this idea that we're left with after we read a story. That's how I would explain theme anyway. And it can really help when when you're writing a summary because it helps you explain what what that story is all about. All right, so. Now I have some other questions for you, Jane. Uh, just okay. to talk a, a, a little bit about writing. I think there's something special about stories that are written about Northwestern Ontario. Did you want to speak about that at all? Oh yeah, like that's a very near and dear topic to my heart. Mm -hmm. And um, I absolutely think that um, the students in 
staff and anyone involved with this uh, course, you know, are very, very fortunate to live in um, such a beautiful part of Canada. And um, there's a lot of beauty there that you might take for granted until you've been away from it for a while. And, um, you know, artists have tried to capture that for years through painting and writing and um, various other expressions. So um, to me, the the beauty of the north is abundant, and um, it's it's water and it's rocks and it's fresh air and it's wildlife and mm-hmm. um, it really is um, as my father would always say, what a country, mm-hmm. you know, what a country it is indeed. And this is a very special year for um, a lot of people in Canada are celebrating uh, 150 years of Confederation, and I think that stories about Canada by Canadians and for Canadians would would really um, find a, a special place uh, at this year, especially. Oh, thank you for that. I agree. <laughs> I definitely agree. Yeah. All right. I have I have one last question for you, and I'm a bit sad because I I will really miss chatting with you, Jane. Oh, thanks, Andrea. Me too. Oh. So my last question: If you had to explain how you have been able to reach your goals what would you say are the most important things that you have done? Well, I think, um, first of all, always realizing that our goals change and develop as we um, go along the journey of our life. And um, that, that, that to me is um, like, you know, I never said, okay, I am going to um, work at a bank and be a bank manager. And then that's my goal. And then I'm going to do that for 40 years and then I'm going to retire. So for me, I've had a very um, diverse and winding career that has always centered around um, writing and journalism and communications, but it's gone from, you know, writing on a typewriter back then to now doing social media posts. Wow. So things things change, right? Yeah. And I think through all of that, we have to change with the times, and, and at the center of everything would be um, lifelong learning. And we all learn in a variety of ways. Even this morning, I got up very early this morning to attend a workshop put on by Google on how um, mobile phones have have changed our lives and how the average Canadian now goes on their mobile phone 150 times a day. Holy smokes. I know. And I thought, what? And then, of course, this person's from Toronto, but she's Mm -hmm. giving this big example about, you know, her phone is her alarm clock. Yeah, and yeah. it's also uh, where she emails people, and it's also where she takes photos, and mm-hmm. it's where she goes to do her online shopping. Yeah, and um, you know, at the end of the day, she sets her alarm again before she goes to sleep at night. So, um, I think, you know, I, I'm studying right now. I told, I think I told you this before, Andrea. I'm studying. Mm-hmm. Um, at McMaster University right now at this later stage of my career taking a, a master's degree. Yes. And so I think that um, your students are all to be congratulated for continuing with learning and um, knowing that um, it's something that they can always be learning. I mean, whether you're watching a YouTube video on how to do something or you're reading or writing yourself or getting people to edit your work and examine your work and challenge you, um, that's, that's, that's really the most important thing, I think, is, is keeping your mind alive and, and challenging yourself. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. What a great answer. <laughs> what about for you? For me, you know, it's just been realizing that even if I stumble, even if I have a, a challenge that I find that, that, that maybe I might think I might not get through this, I just remind myself to keep going and 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 not stop right as soon as i stop then that means that you know maybe i it'll be harder to get back to it and then the other thing that i do myself um um, some people know this I, i used to be a competitive swimmer so i was really big on setting goals but setting goals in such a way that um that i broke them down into smaller manageable pieces so rather than saying that you know, by this time next month, I will be five seconds faster in a certain event. I I broke that down and said, okay, you know, tomorrow I'm going to do this. And then, and then, you know, over the course of the week, I'm going to do these three things. And then, you know, and so, so 
all these little things that I'm doing will add up to me reaching that goal. And, and, the, and I guess the only other thing is that even if you set a goal and then you're going along and you feel like, I'm just, I'm not going to get there when I want to, or, I mean, to me, that's part of life, right? I mean, you're, I think you're always reassessing where you want to be and what you want to do. And, and, and not only that, but sometimes opportunities that you didn't expect to come up, come up. And, and, and if you're afraid to take advantage of those opportunities, if you think, okay, I, you know, I, I can only go in one direction with this, then, then you might miss out. So, yeah, absolutely. And also that those little one activities are actually are your life. Right? <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's, that's every day, right? Enjoying every right. day. That's right. Enjoying every day. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's really, it, it's, it's really nice when, too, when you can step back and, and look at what you've done and, and say, oh, I'm, I'm really proud of that. And, and, you know, so sometimes if I, if I feel down and, and I feel like maybe I'm not doing what I hope to be doing, I, I try to remember all the things that I have done and, and that can, that can get me back into it as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right. So just before I say goodbye, I'm sad, but it's okay. Uh, just a, just a few reminders for, for students. For assignment 23, please read the story that's in your textbook. It's another story that Jane wrote and it's, and it's called The Journal. And again, Jane would be happy to read some of your, some of your writing. So if there is anything that you would like to share, please send it to me and then I'll send it to her. Anything else you'd like to say before you go? Um, you know, just uh, soak up where you are, wherever you are, um, there's inspiration to be found. And, um, and just, you know, start. <laughs> because a lot of people spend a lot of time overthinking and worrying and mulling and not knowing how to start. Hmm. And it's very easy just to, um, if you follow Andrea's structure, or even just starting that opening line or that opening paragraph, um, you know, you can always change it. You can always go back and build on it, but mm -hmm. it's just important to eventually just start. And uh, people in my course of study say it's also important to know when to finish mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that it's good. You know, you can end it and, and end that piece and that allows you then to go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just, I love how you tied in the idea of setting goals with you know, making a plan for, for your writing. I, I just love that. Um, and, and, and if I may, I just, I just thought I'd add to that, you know, you might write something and then go back to it later on and, and realize that maybe you want to use it or, or, or fix it up or use it for something else or that sort of thing too. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. And okay, uh, take care and say hi yes. to the North for me. I will have a, have a great evening. You too. Bye, okay. everyone. Bye. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone who is listening, and uh, have a great night. Okay. Bye.